There's the card. Mangus at the back. Mullins, Boyle, Collins, Nandruku. Daly Stone, Wesley, Ferner, Hetherington. Lomax, Steve Walters, Dubico. Tim Sheen's the coach. Their team has only got a minor change. It's Alexander Hoppy, Blackmore, Rapati, Ellis Namu, Jones Horro, Kearney Betts Platt, Eru is back, and Vagana. John Money is a coach more or less under siege. Opening match of round 21. The Optus Cup. Second last weekend is underway before we make the big finals. Lomax comes barging back at them. We get the Warriors meeting and down on the Canberra 20 metre line. Magnificent record, Canberra. They haven't been beaten on a Friday night since the first round in 1993. That doesn't mean they haven't been beaten, but on a Friday night, they got an incredible record. Mullen starts the match in the center. Mandruku comes back in to be met again by an enthusiastic Auckland. 40 meter line behind Steve Walters as he goes out in pursuit and finds the halfway line. The smoke from the fireworks still clearing and with the heavy atmosphere, it might take quite some time. As Daly gets a touch and he puts it into the air to onside chases. Alexander tackled by a player inside the 10, but he was onside. Yeah, Sean Hoppy scoots out of dummy half, obviously with the amount of class players out there this evening. Plenty of great personal clashes. Really looking forward to the hookers. Iru and Steve Wallace, two of the best dummy half runners in the game. And the impact they have on this match will be a good indication of how their side is travelling. Auckland then back on their own 20 metre line. And the wide shot that we take of them running the ball out will show a distinct lack of width in their attack. They cluster around the ruck, and that automatically indicates that they're not going to spread it like a Brisbane or a Canberra. Magus is wearing the number one, Brett Mullins wants it back. 15 is Collins. And speaking of Brett Mullins, although he's named on the wing, he's actually playing in the centres with Steve Collins. Playing on the wing. Walters then, a dummy on the right. He comes back on the left for Ferner. Stone unloading just a short ball. Really purposeful to the lock forward, David Wesley. Now Daly takes a look and then puts the kick high. Daly's kick goes out on the fall. Well, that will be a turnover. That was the last from memory. Yeah, David Boyle claiming that it landed in the field of play, but I think the touch judges ruled that it's touched the line, and that means it is out on the fall. A little doubt about that. Morgana. In the beaten side, he's been impressive for Ghana. He has impressed Steve Roach. Stephen Kearney to the halfway line. Friday night football. Good play the ball. Eru. Eru was a lot was alert. And pinched another 10 meters for Jones to give it on and Horro to take it ahead. Horro had the number nine on last Friday night. To me, he looked totally lost. Tonight he'll be more comfortable as a back rower. And uh, Ellis contested with Nandruku. And it's a turnover to Canberra. Noah. The percentages look good, Canberra, if they make the eight. And I'm sure they will, but they have got a very good percentage rating. Something like plus 104 coming into the match. They're seventh against Auckland, ninth. Auckland, of course, uh, superseded last weekend by, by Western Suburbs. This is a very versatile footballer with the ball, David Wesley. You can shovel him around, shuffle him around from front row to lock. Devico didn't quite get the shot on him, Horro. He wanted to, he wanted to hurt him. Charged down by Namu. Fortuitous for Auckland, it's with Vagana. And already you can see the 
importance of Laurie Daly to this side. What that's the, the great thing I like about him as a player is his involvement. Early in this match, he gets into first receiver despite playing at 5'8. Comes in looking for the football, directing play. And that'll be a penalty to the Auckland side. Stephen Kearney interfered with in his attempt to get up and play the football. Well, I wonder will they take the shot. What's uh, what's happening with the breeze, Steve? No, it's uh, in favour of the Auckland Warriors. So it's, uh, there's not much breeze to speak of. But from 36 metres out, you'd think that he would take the kick, but he's not. Greg Alexander, Alexander is the man in charge, and he opts to take the kick for line. This is uh, Andy Platt taking it ahead now, 18 metres away from the Canberra line. Vagana makes it ahead, turning on the defence. He, he certainly didn't hurt the defence, and they didn't hurt him, I suppose. Evru on a runaround mission, a dummy, and then back for Betts coming down the blind. Betts is about eight metres out from the line. Jones, Alexander, and then Namu. Why? Blackmore, Blackmore. Got the pass away, they got the numbers. Knocked down. He'll call it back, it came off. Mandruku, but I wonder what part of Mandruku it came off. Yeah, good play there from the Warriors. He's spinning the ball wide. Richie Blackmore is a player of a lot of skill. He's got some speed. He gets on the outside of his man, creates the overlap. Now, there's the ball there, and it's come off his arm. Just a good chance again for Auckland. They have the feed and the loose head. They win the scrum. Namu across and picking up Tia Rapati. Way back for Alexander. They come open side. Namu inside pass for Blackmore who fends away from one and gets away from another good work by Blackmore he's opened up the ground on the right it's a narrow blind side Kearney's running decoy down there Black comes down the open side and uh, Andy Paddle player two meters out from the line chance here for Auckland Jones Kearney Kearney and that's Eru now Walters shuts him down with the help of Steve Stone. They're 11 metres out from the line. Betts is on the blind side with the ball. <laughs> Betts. That's Blackmore. Now Jones. To the air. High and... Over the dead ball line. It may have come off Canberra. This might be a line dropout. Let's have a look at it. Now Manson's pointing back to the 20 metre line. Hey, good football from both sides there. Good attack. See who gets the touch. Comes off the hand of Andy Platt, so a good ruling there. A lot of changes in direction of attack from the Warriors. It was well read by Canberra. Defence looked very solid. Bit of a scuffle up in back play Ooh, between Horro pretty good shot from and Lomax. Lomax. In fact, it's now erupted. I'd like to be on Lomax. Did Last lose. thing John Lomax needs to be in is something like this. What's Tim Sheen saying, I wonder? He Get just, out of it. He just yelled out, play footy. That's what he wants from his side, especially from John Lomax. Lomax did land quite a right hand. Just repeating, if you do find the stick under your seat, proceed just near half-time to the... Uh, you see in the background, the first one landing. It was tit for tap, and, uh, but I think Lomax probably had the ascendancy. Well, they're former New Zealand test teammates, the boys, having a, a scuffle. But David Manson, I've got to say this about him, he's a pretty cool head. He'll handle this situation pretty well. I got the impression the first punch was thrown by, by Lomax. I wonder whether the penalty will go against him. No, it looks like a Raiders penalty. Well, he hasn't worried about that. I think he's got them from being inside the 10 metres from the, the last play of the ball. Yeah. He's only just given them both a caution for their part in the play. This was a penalty for the 10 metres being infringed. DeVico, 35 metres out as they come down the blind side. Walter's working in close company there with David Boyle. Boyle about 23 metres out now from the Auckland line. To the right. Nowhere else to go, really. It's a stone. Walters looking for Daly. And Daly. Then Ferner. Playing 100 tonight, David Ferner. First grade games. Daly again. He's in everything, isn't he? Hedrington. 
Now well, it's come back down to Canberra. It'll be six more. It is. Mullins will play it. So start the start the tackle count again now. DeVico. Hedrington and a penalty to Canberra. Well, somebody wanted to play on. This is in very close proximity. One of the Auckland players punching at the football. It was a ruling from Manson in the play the ball area. And Daly pointing to the post saying we'll take the two. David Furner stepping up. And that's the one thing you cannot allow the Raiders to do against you is to get sets of six in a row. Yeah, Gene Namu was the player penalised. David Ferner, one of the one of the big names, is about to take this penalty shot. Laurie Daly, one of the others that are left, but not many of them. Stuart, Clyde, Croker, Wiki, all gone. Young Kennedy. And here's this young man, David Ferner, playing his 100th first grade game tonight. Son of Don Ferner, Australian selector, chairman, and coach of the Raiders formerly. And there's the kick between the uprights. So David Ferner celebrates 100 with first points tonight against Auckland. 11 minutes gone. It's the Raiders 2, the Warriors yet to score in Friday Night Football. Stone around the back. Second man play for Ferner! Oh, great pass! Stone! Nine metres out from the line, David Ferner. That was brilliant. Penalty Canberra in front. And the send back. It's warranted and has been ordered against Mark Howell. Yeah, there's been plenty of infringements in the play of the balls tonight, and uh, his patience has worn out, David Manson. At first, after he gave the penalty, he, he didn't put him in the bin, but then I think Horror must have said something, or he had a second go at it and he put him in the bin there. Quick tap, it looks like. They're not taking the two. Just wonder whether there was another player involved, and Horror was actually the second man in. Steve Walters forced back. He's five metres out from the line. Canberra refusing two points. And now Momando. Walters looking around, left and right. Stone and then Daly. Daly for Wesley. Yes! Touchdown! The green machine is in. He has a lot of success, David Wesley, off the Laurie Daly pass out in the back line. And on this occasion, just too much for the, the Warriors to do. Too much defence. The initial bust again made by David Furness, Steve Stone. Sean Hoppy was the man who could have been penalised or sin bin first up, and then Mark Horro came in. And no surprise, really, that the Warriors scored on here the Raiders they, they had no doubt that they were close to cracking staggered defense there Stacey Jones didn't go up as quickly as Gene Namu and the gap appeared for the big David Wesley yeah strong running by Wesley he was one on one but you've got big man against little man and Jones not uh, strong enough to hold him he runs uh, very powerfully does Wesley he's a shandy off making the Queensland State of Origin side this year and some hope of getting there next year I'd say So on the very first play after the sin binning of Mark Horro, Canberra through David Wesley and his combination with Laurie Daly. They get the first try. Ferner from wide. Coming in nicely. And straight as a gun barrel. Not uh, pleasing the Auckland coach. Canberra eight. Auckland no score. 26 minutes gone. Friday night football. Just uh, some strapping there on that uh, right wrist and hand of John Lomax. As we say welcome back to Canberra, to the national capital. And uh, this magnificent sports venue. A city that's been under the spotlight during the week for all the wrong reasons. 
leading up to the budget. Walters. Well, that's three tackles and they've come over 50 metres. Warning signs here for Orkham. Too many missed tackles. Falling off one player short. The Raiders really with some momentum now. Daly. Amando. Heard a call on the inside from Daly backing up. Five tackles gone. Daly will probably go to the air. No, he's gone through the hands for Stone. And Stone's kick comes back high and across. Battered down. Kick through by Stone off the uprights for Hoppy. And Hoppy makes a great run of about 15 metres from under pressure. Now Alexander. Ellis. Judge. Adam Kelly, Blake is on. That's him a dummy hub. Namu. Betts. 40 metre line underneath Betts as uh, he's put into the, the turf by Hetherington. Blake. Kearney. Halfway line. Five gone. The kick will come from this man, Namu. And that's Nandruku falling back with Nagus off to his right. In fact, it's going over the dead ball line. So it'll come back out to the 20 metre line for the tap restart. Big kick by Namu, but it was uh, carrying too much weight, too much volume. 28 and a half gone in the game. Hetherington took a heavy hit from uh, Okasini there. But he's a strong young cult. Hetherington. Not frightened to unload in, in uh, pressured situations. Quentin Pongia, the troublesome left knee, strapped. Steve Walters back fully in condition now. Daly looking to unload. He's got rid of the tackler. He's into space. He's got support on the inside. It's Nagus. And Kenny Nagus scores. But what about, what about Laurie Daly? Too strong, Laurie Daly. Rushed through the tackle of Gene Namu, who rushed up and done a good job to get to Daly. Market defence woeful from the, the Warriors, and, and that's probably the worst sign in your defence. There's Namu coming up quickly on Laurie Daly, and the, the leg drive, too much power. Richie Blackmore trying the ankle tap, and Ken Nagus, try scoring machine, gets over for a, a soft try. They really have stopped moving up now, the Warriors. Not how easy was that from Daly? He's chased the ball from end to hand to hand, and away he goes. The leg drive is there into the open, and the support is coming from Nagus. You see Nitro Ocasino in the background, he's slowed down, Blackmore couldn't get him. And another Canberra try, and they're doing it so easily at the moment against a very shoddy Auckland defence. There's a beautiful move at Ken Nagus. will make it very difficult for Brett Mullins to re regain his full-back position. What about when Daly shrugged off Namu? Did you see the eyes open up? Oh, yeah, the eyes started going around like a poker machine. They're awesome, aren't they, when they start doing that? He's got the block of Roach eyes of the 90s. 14-0. Ferner converting. 30 gone. And back at 14-0. Uh, 14, 14 Canberra with two tries. Well, what the hell's happened there? Pardon me, sir. Yeah, Ken Nagus slipping over in his attempt to pass the football to Wesley, and that's ridiculous play. Frustration there, and Paul Blake hasn't been out that, there that long to be frustrated. Well, Nagus takes it in goal, the kickoff. <laughs> <laughs> and then Momando, Momando says, pardon me, sir. Might have just seen that penalty count seven to one just goes to show how much uh, discipline the Auckland side is missing tonight they've just got nothing out there giving away silly penalties here they come again well they're not handling the speed of the play the ball from the Raiders at all and that's why they are giving away so many penalties because they're forced to try and slow it down from impossible positions Steve Wallace is having a picnic from dummy half the market defense 
was almost non-existent at times. 32nd minute, 14 nil, and one gets the impression that's about to change again. Mullen, heavy work, buffeting on Mullen. Kearney was the, the chief aggressor. Wolford is on in 17. They cut out Hetherington, go looking for Daly. Daly sweeping it across. Boyle steps around Blackmore, puts in a grubbing kick, there's a chance. No, no, no. Collins missing by the skin of his teeth. Well, the Northland player raced almost from outside centre to go in towards Laurie Daly and invited them to pass the football. They're so close again. A, a good idea, the kick from Boyle. Now, Ocasini stopping before the defensive line, 33 out from his own line centre field. And just look at the one-out stuff from Auckland. Party. Just short of the 40 metre line. Blake crossing it now, but running into the welcoming arms of uh, David Ferner. Zul having a uh, fine game to celebrate uh, his century in first grade tonight. David Ferner, he's made as many clean breaks as any player out there, if not more. Now, Colin. Simon Wolford in 17 is, of course, the, the heir apparent to Steve Walters. Just how long it'll be before he gets the gets the job, I suppose, depends on Steve Walters. Rochi. Yeah, you have a look at uh, how versatile are these uh, Canberra Raider players. In defence, Simon Wolford, who's gone on for Steve Stone, is playing uh, in the second line and then goes in with, there he goes, running from dummy half now and use Steve Walters as another running forward. Daly with a mile of time. He's kicked down to the, the goal line for Alexander. Greg did well. He beat two. Not so with Mullins. Jones. Horro coming back from the bin. Betts. Fourteen nil. Tries for Wesley and Magus for Canberra. Kearney, great pass. Ellis can't hit. No, no it's not Ellis. It's Gooden Beal. Oh, that's unlucky. That was a magic ball from Kearney. He's the forward who's looked most of likely to make a break for the Auckland side. He's been in great form the last few weeks. Gets through the line. Bumps off. One, and that's a beautiful ball. Couldn't be handled from Gutenbeel, though. Yeah, the two number 12s are having fine matches out there, and, and they look to be the, the two players most likely to trouble the defence. It's a super ball from Carney, who you see packing into the front row. Firma. Hetherington. Renouf, Renoff, Kearney, Carney. Ramika, Ramika. <laughs> Daly. Firma. Oh, he ran into Andy Platt. Now they go back on the blind side for Wolford and Nagus to put it together. Nagus on five. Daly, quick hands. Pongier and Boyle. Boyle off the right foot. Alexander. Boyle putting them all on side. I don't know about uh, the presence of Pong gear, whether it was needed. Could have brought a penalty. Jolting tackle as Hoppy's head goes back. Hetherington and Lomax. 14-0, 36 gone. He's really returned to some form the last couple of weeks, Sean Hoppy. Mark Ellis, scamper centre field. For the last couple of seasons, he's been one of the most professional wingmen around. We cool under pressure, just does everything with a minimum of fuss, but does it so effectively, and we've seen that the last fortnight. As Andy Platt picked up and driven. Steve Walters underneath him. Strong leg drive from Walters. Uh, just looking at John Lomax, I don't think he's going to be there much longer. He's got uh, terrible pain coming from that right wrist and uh, hand area. 
and as he runs to this scrum or, or walks to it, it's, he's just sort of hanging it out like a, a clothesline. He's sort of trying to get some feeling into it as he's walking there. He doesn't hang it out the clothesline too long. That's what's got him into some trouble. Did I, did I just see him push somebody up into the front row? No, he's, he's taken it himself. David Manson, like the ham and the sandwich. A big push by Auckland. And a little knock on there, I think. Well, more and more, we're seeing clubs prepared to contest the football in the scrum. I mean, it's unbelievable that you could lose a scrum under these situations. But if you go to sleep, there are clubs prepared to put a big push on you. This is Blackmore. Now Hoppy. 11 metres out from the Canberra line. Alexander. Namu. Momando over the top. Boyle underneath. Blake. Gutenbeel. Quick play the ball. A chance for Auckland. Blake. Then it's over for Blackmore. He's in. Richard Blackmore scores wide out for Auckland. Just what the doctor ordered. And it's Phil Blake running from dummy half who set the try up. Comes back to the scrum, a little knock on from Wolford. Here's Blakey drifting off, he's drawn two in. And that ball there took another one out. And uh, the camera players didn't read it too well out there. And Richie Blackmore, he's played pretty well for the Auckland side, gets their try. Yeah, Brett Mullins in two mind here. The fact that Phil Blake ran across field caused the Canberra defence to come up in a staggered fashion. There was a big hole there for Dennis Betts. The ball eventually finding Richard Blackmore. Very close to the in-goal area, just trying to improve the position for his kicker. And he has been very strong, as Paul pointed out, in the first half here. It is quite a good centre pairing, the interior of party. Sixth try of the year, Blackmore, big man. Played, played for the Kiwis. And of course, uh, played in England for quite a couple of, for quite a long time. Jinamu has uh, scored 116 points for the season. And here he is from 15 in, and the kick is good. So the Blackmore try has been converted. And Canberra leading Auckland now by eight points. 39 minutes gone. And uh, we approach half time. I'm just wondering whether there will be any more play in front of the break. <coughs> Quick chat there between uh, David Manson and Phil Blake. There's the siren now, so there's no need for any more. And David Manson acknowledges that. So at halftime, two tries to Canberra. They were scored by David Westley and uh, Ken Nagus. As this lengthy chat continues between Phil Blake and David Manson. Richard Blackmore scored the try for Auckland. And uh, Gene Namu and David Ferner have added the extras. 14 to 6 then as we break. Done nothing but wrap the blow for the last three weeks, but that looked like it was a soft carry, and I think I know why now. He got up clutching at a shoulder, and there he is. This is Andy Platt. 14 points to six, the home side, two tries to one in front. Dennis Betts. Halfway line, and Auckland with a problem with their front row of Vagana. He's heading to the sideline. I don't think we'll see him again tonight. Mandruku bringing it back to be tackled by Jones, and, and there's the injured Vagana. Collins. Steve Collins playing on the wing. Mullins in the centres. That's been the pattern all night with Ruben Wickey out for the season for Canberra. Steve Walters picks up where he left off in the first half. Running 
at will from dummy half. Stone. And now Furner. Made about three clean breaks in the first half, David Furner. Down the blind they go. Daly with a short stabbing kick. And it draws Alexander up from in the deep. So Auckland coming away now outside their 30 metre line. Steve Roach on the sidelines with his uh, half-time dressing rooms report. Yeah, well, Tim Sheens obviously was very happy with the Raiders. He wants his team to work to the middle of the field and then try to attack with a lot of inside balls. He said he wants a better chasing game because uh, he thinks a couple of times that they ch they kicked in the first half, their chase wasn't that good. He wants to improve in that area. He said, don't get excited with the football and keep trying to offload it all the time. I know your chance will come and the points will come if you complete your sets of six. For Auckland, John Maney thinks his team can do something if they get an even share of possession, uh, but he was filthy on their marker defence and their inside uh, marker when they're chasing and, and all the defensive work in the middle of the ruck was uh, the most important thing that he spoke about. Uh, he said support Blake when he's making yardage out of dummy half and also Blackmore, he praised him for his effort in the first half, but very disappointed with uh, all aspects of their defence. This is Nagus. Canberra just working it out. 30 metre line just behind them. As Walters again comes out from dummy half. I don't think so. I've seen Steve Walters run as much from dummy half. Daly then kicking out of that same position and straight between the winger over on the left and the full back. And Sean Hoppy it is that is charged with the job of bringing it back to be tackled by Collins. This is Namu. Ellis. Pulled down by Firma, so that's the second tackle gone, and there's the 10-meter line behind them. Namu and Betts. I don't know that Dennis Betts wanted that. Third tackle gone. Hebrew using Andy Platt. 14 is Pongia. Four minutes of the second half gone. As they come down the centre now with Stephen Kearney. And the last. So they got out of a fairly tight situation on the last couple of tackles. Namu sending it down for Nandruku. And Noah is taken by Ellis. Ellis having to leap high to shut the ball down. This is Hetherington. Bets over the top. Eru underneath. 30 metre line. Daly. Ferner. And then Boyle. Boyle looking to slide it round the corner. Here's Canberra. Looking to do a Canterbury this year. And of those teams that finish in the bottom half of the top eight, I suppose they're the ones most likely to do it. But it will take one Herculean performance for them to do it. Just so much personnel out. Ah, oh, Wesley uses Mullins. Mullins down the right. Infield pass. Nagus is on it. It's play on and Nagus gets his second try. Here's the perfect example of the poor defence of Orphan. Terrible defence down this right-hand side of the field. Great work from some of the Raiders here. It's not a bad line. They're numbering off quite well, and he's held. Look at this for a ball. Totally ineffective defence. Mullins into the clear. And from here, you're always thinking it was going to be a try. And the embarrassing thing for Auckland is once Nagus gets the ball, there's not an Auckland player within 10 or 15 metres of him. Yeah, they all dropped off, didn't they? That, that's, that was the worst part of the, the ball of this, apart from these two guys not being able to wrap the ball up on this occasion with David Wesley. Beautiful pass to the flying Brett Mullins. Greg Alexander showed him the sideline. He took it, but Alexander did a good job to get across. And the pass back inside, if there'd have been any urgency at all in the cover defence from the Auckland team, this probably would not have been a try. Ball going over the head of Nandruka. In fact, he let it go. And there you can see Nagus and Steve Stone lining up, not at Auckland jersey within Kiwi. Yes, once, once uh, Rapati went in on Wesley he had to make his tackle count and when he failed that made the gap 
right in front for David Ferner. Easy work. Now DeVico. Walters. Wesley. Mullins is with him. Wesley. Out she comes. Nandruku. Yes. Noah. He gets another try for Canberra, and what a game David Wesley is having. Well, this is the third try he's been involved in, David Wesley, lurking down the blind side, having a picnic down there. This is a, a move that might have gone wrong. It, the ball popped loose from Wesley. He goes for the, the gap, gets through the Betts tackle, just pops it loose. Now he offloads, and look at Andruku. There's six players around him, but he gets in low and drives. Yeah, that was the key to it, getting down low. And also the fact that three of those six on the other side of the ruck didn't react again. Driving tackle from Betts. Wesley trying to offload, flicks it out with his right hand. Nandruku swoops, he sees a gap there. These three players have come across, the other three just haven't reacted. Platt was one of them. May left the hole. Noah and Andruku joined Steve Renoff at the top of the try scoring lists. 17 this year, he's having a great season. A couple of head of the North Sydney Flyer, Brett Dallas. And we just saw John Maney there. He, he just mustn't be able to believe what's gone on the last couple of weeks with his side. This is David Ferner now. From the 20 metre line and the 10 metre line, and he's missed it. So, the perfect record falls off for David Ferner. 24 to 6, Canberra over Auckland, 51 minutes gone. This is Friday Night Football. And he plat, setting himself to run through the line, almost doing it and coming out of it injured. Good and beer. Center of the ground on the 20 meter line. Namu. Oh, Kearney! There's a chance on! Oh, they've made a mess of it! Oh, Rapati has gone without it. It was a clean break. Another great run from Kearney. But unfortunately, the pass was a shocker that he threw. Deceptive the ball there from Namu, filled the Canberra defense, and a completely mistimed pass. Went behind him. A shame for Stephen Kearney. He, like Ferner, has been very good at busting the line. You see Canberra win the scrum. And Andy Platt leaving the field now, so injury problems again for the Warriors. For Canberra. Well, David Ferner trying to take it through the middle, and Richard Blackmore it is that man handles him. Wolford is back on, and then a great run by Davico carries him within two meters of the halfway line for Wolford again to answer for Daly, and then for Wesley. Magnificent game for David Wesley tonight. Let's look at his personal statistics. 13 tackles and 11 hit-ups. And he's played a part in three tries, scoring one of them himself. Alexander going across the 20-metre line. Momando is on in 16. As Tim Sheens uses his interchange. Sheens, of course, heading for North Queensland at the end of this season. And he's had um, a magnificent run with the Canberra club. So they've only missed the finals once in his time in charge with the Raiders. Quite surprising as we go into the 21st round of competition this year that Canberra, if they win tonight, which it looks as though they will, first time they've won three in a row all year. Been a good stop-start for them, but we know of the problems they've experienced. You've got a very big back line, Auckland. As Goodenbeal goes over the 20. Can he make it? Yes! Was there a double movement there in the last washout? Yes, there is. No try. Oh, Auckland. They have massacred three tries. Oh, they're just carving themselves up. They're giving themselves doubles and triples all over the place. He slams the ball down. It's short. And, well, it's not as if he looked at his elbow to put it over the line. 
Oh, I just wonder whether it's almost like he's got pushed from behind. Yeah, it's, uh, he's got help from behind promoting or moving the football close to the line. In fact, on the line. So it's not really a double movement. I reckon it's a try. So do I. It looks like he's had somebody shunting him from out of the picture. So if they push over the sideline like that, you'll be the scrum will be ruled. Opposition feed. Furner. Five metres away from the halfway, Canberra replying now to what might well have been a try for Auckland. I, I do, you, we can't, we can't tell because it looked like he was getting a shove from somebody out of the picture, and I fancy that it was the tackler. Daly with a neat little chip, Mullins. Oh, gee, I thought we're going to get a repeat of something quite fantastic. And you remember, of course, what I'm talking about. Probably the most fantastic try I've ever seen. And here, Brett Mullins was performing, performing again. It didn't come off. This is Blackmore. Iru, Namu. Infield for Betts. Halfway line. Hetherington the 11 making the tackle. Eru, Occasini. Mamando and Wolford making that tackle. Auckland 24 to 6. More than an hour gone. Pass out the back. Namu. And then Alexander. Taken down by David Boyle. And the last tackle is with them and they haven't really gone anywhere. A testimony, I suppose. To Canberra's defence, the bomb in midfield, bouncing back for Daly. Then Collins, and uh, pulled down by Mark Horrow. And the Canberra crowd appealing for a penalty. Aveen is Kenworthy. Wolford out from Dunny half a couple of paces, and then it is with Boyle, I fancy. Daly again, and then Momando. Wolford. Paulina's pond here. Heavy work by Betts. Out comes the ball. Play on. It's Kearney with it. Horro. Classic. He's back. Blackmore. Halfway line. 24 to 6. The Raiders with four tries. But it's not good play, is it, from Auckland? Just saw a 30 metre cutout pass then thrown to a front rower standing out wide, standing still. They've got to be going forward. Betts. Kearney. Namu on. Blackball with it. Did well. That's Jones. Now the last. Namu under pressure again, getting a kick in. Kenworthy carries it back. 30 metres out from his own line. Nagus. Boyle. Platt and Horro making the tackle. Just over 15 minutes of the match remaining. Momando. Wolford. Daly. And now they're standing right up on Daly. They're almost shaking hands with him, but he's still able to get it away. Boyle. Walters. Goes himself, Steve, again. The first priority at marker is to make sure that the, the dummy half does not scoot. You've got to wait until the ball leaves his hands before moving. It's just fall for the dummy there as Laurie Daly decides to run the football on the last burner. Throws the dummy. Good cover across there from Carney. The 12s come together. And the tackle completed. 39 out. Handover. And let's see if the Auckland Warriors set of six on this occasion is a bit more organised than the last time they had the football. Talking of Steve Walters and his runs from dummy half. 
12 times in the match he's opted to run and I, I tend to think that might be of record proportions for Steve Walters and you can bet your bottom dollar he wouldn't have been running unless he could see the opportunity to make meters played by Ocasini and Blake Blake goes away from dummy half 28 meters out from the line from Jones on Namu across Rapati and Blackmore Hoppy 15 meters out from the Canberra line 24 to 6 there in front they're coasting Namu's kick can that alter the scoreboard well it's gone forward anyway the put down was of little consequence and Mark Ellis and Dennis bets out wide for the Warriors and those players appeared to get a hand to it I think they both might have Greg Alexander he knew that there'd been a knock on crowd not too bad considering the, the mercury the mercury is in the very low very low single figures 14,528 braving the temperatures that is Mamando what does your thermometer say down there Steve Freezing, right? Just freezing. <laughs> yeah, it's all right. Once you go numb, but it's okay. <laughs> Thanks Daily. For, thanks for your support. Bro. Now, Nandruku. <laughs> well, the second time in a row, the Raiders have opted to run the football in the last and not got a kick in at the end. Yeah. The Warriors with the football in good field position, 45 metres out centre field. And Andy Platt. Good charge up the centre of the run. Yeah, from turnovers, they're very disorganised, Auckland. A lot of clubs get set, they're ready to go straight from that turnover as far as spinning the ball wide is concerned, but not Auckland. Kearney! Kearney! And again, they have bombed it, but it's a penalty. And the bin. Sinbin has been ordered by David Manson. Yeah, after the Kearney break, a Canberra player held out an Auckland support player, and it's Steve Stone off to the bin for 10. Again, Kearney straight through, got the big stride going. He's had a game, hasn't he? Yeah. Yeah. Looking for support on the inside, and a good, good ruling there, professional foul. Again, Platt takes the charge. Nine metres out from the line. Blake, Jones, Namu. They cut out Ellis on the bounces with Kerwin, and now Ellis again. Boyle making the tackle, back for Jones. 20 metre line just in front of him. Blake, Namu, Ocasini. Alexander, and then for Andy Platt. Knocked down by Canberra, backwards and away comes Nagus. Not only away, but he's through. Nagus is on his way. Here comes a chase up. Nagus will make it. I think that might be number three, is it, for Nagus? It is the treble for the Canberra number one. And can't he go the length of the field? Kenny Nagus. Remember a few weeks ago, he scored the match winner against the Roosters. This time, so unlucky. Andy Platt looking to pass the ball over the top. Comes off Laurie Daly's arm. And then Nagus straight up the middle. One of the best movers in the game. Just so effortless. Sean Hoppy, a valiant chase from him from the far wing. Thought you might have, you might have got him about 20 out, but the run just pleaded. And Kenny Nagus breaks your heart. I've been trying to work out who this bloke reminds me of as a mover. Paul Larry Corowa, not terribly uh, dissimilar to the, the action of Nagus. No, they look the same too, and uh, both very quick. They've had no luck tonight at Auckland. They could have scored probably three or four tries, but Canberra's defence has been good. They're getting their hands in the right places. Yeah, real chance there for the Warriors. Again, if Platt's pass had have found the mark, they had an overlap. But it's the economy of movement with Ken Nagus, isn't it? There's just too many 
moving parts flying everywhere. It's just a nice fluid action. Now let me tell you, the black I just mentioned, Larry Corova, he didn't exert too many, uh, too many unnecessary muscles either. Larry was all about uh, graceful movement. So David Ferner, with four from five, will try and convert Ken Nagus' third try tonight. Poor old Auckland. You've got to feel a bit sorry for them. They've, uh, massacred some tries and then butchered another there. 30 points to six. Canberra over Auckland. And we're 10 minutes out from full time. Just looking at some of these statistics alongside the Canberra players. Wesley, 14 tackles, 13 hit-ups. A lot of quality in his effort. Fernand, 19 and 19. Hetherington, 27 and 12. Walters, 17 and 12. DeVico, 11 and 19. Been some very good efforts in amongst the Canberra forwards tonight, but I do come back as Mullins makes this run. I do come back to something that I subscribe to often. I wonder where they would be given they didn't have a Laurie Daly out there. Sometimes you overlook the superstar, don't you? Well, you mark harder on them, don't you? And uh, That's right. You, you do mark harder on superstars. And I've got to say that I made a statement early in the match that uh, the performances of Sid Eru and, and Steve Wallace in this game would be an indication of how the match was going as Ferner again makes a bust. Stacey Jones picks up. He's got a bit of support on the outside in Ellis. To the 20 metre line, Ellis is still there, the ball inside, and again they bomb it. And now Canberra comes back with Daly. Nagus is with it again. DeVico. Wolford. Kenworthy. Just on Laurie Daly, you give players ratings every week out of 10. You're marking down for an eight every game, anything less than that. You probably think he's played ordinary. 7.5 even is an ordinary game for him, but I'll tell you what, not too many times you get a 7.5. It'll be at eight and a half tonight. Have they got a touch on that, Auckland. He didn't restart the tackle count, though, to the best of my knowledge. No, he didn't. Ferner plays it on five. And the penalty goes to Canberra. Ball has been raked out by Auckland. Well, if they did rake it out, and obviously you have to believe that they did because Manson's right on the spot, that's got to be the dumbest rake out you've ever seen. Five tackles completed under the referee's nose, and the ball's come loose. Thirty points to six. Two and three quarter minutes left. Quentin Pongia! I thought for a moment he was going to go all the way. Stone comes out of the bin. Away from Walters for Wolford. And then for Hetherington, the run around, the dummy. Back up the centre, Ferner. David Ferner, nine metres out. He too has had a fine match. Daly runs at the line. Boyle, then Daly. Now hands, beautiful hands. But the pass from Daly has been ruled forward. Manson almost apologetically goes across to tell Laurie Daly that it was forward. You don't often see a referee help a player up. But Steve Stone, he's in. He's just come back from the sin bin. Beautiful hands. Lovely kick. Thought the pass is OK. <laughs> David Manson, you know, he... he... Just the little things he does out there. You know he's a you know he's a nice man, but sometimes I think he's too nice. Well, he referees from the heart, for mine. I think he does too. I, I do honestly say he is a lovely man. He almost went over there and apologised to Laurie Daly, and then offered him a hand up. He didn't offer it. He, he did. He helped him up. Kearney. 25 away from his own line, the dying seconds. And the last really few seconds of the season for Auckland. They, as I said earlier, would need an absolute miracle to make the top eight. 
Jones, Kearney, then supported by Kerwin. Namu, Platt, Pongia wraps him up. 30 seconds left on the clock now. Blake across the halfway. Sean Hoppy centre kicks or tries to. It's a good centre kick. <laughs> that's right. That's right. <laughs> Hit the centre of the sideline. <laughs> I was hoping I might have got away with it. But then oh, one of your best. That damn cameraman, he's got it right again. <laughs> Canberra bring it away from their 30 metre line. The siren has sounded. Canberra march on towards the quarterfinals. Auckland. It would seem the end of the road. Canberra defeating Auckland by 30 points to six.